Let's do a few more examples. We're trying to, to integrate functions and we don't know the technique that we're supposed to use, which of course is more realistic if you're doing anything that has applications involving integrals. Uh, no one's going to tell you that, hey, you need to use this method to solve this integral. So we need to be able to identify the particular methods that we're supposed to use. So we have uh, this integral here. Make that minus sign look a little bit nicer for us. And again, we need to go through and first of all check. I don't see any way to simplify this. And then uh, it's possible. It's really easy to go like down a rabbit hole of oh, I need to use. I see a product of two things here. Let's use integration by parts here. Let's use uh, trig substitution here. I've got a plus b variable squared. Uh, this is oh gosh, this is a hard problem, right? Uh, well, no, it's actually one of the easiest problems I could possibly do because you should always be checking for recognized derivatives. Secant times tangent is the derivative of secant. 1 over 1 plus variable squared is the derivative of inverse tangent. So in fact, this is just a one-step problem. Uh, just bring down the constant multiple 3. Secant y tangent y, that's the derivative of secant. Bring down the minus. 1 over 1 plus y squared is the derivative of inverse tangent plus c. Now there's possible to many ways to figure this out besides uh, what I just did. You could actually reprove all of this, but uh, you, you don't have time to reprove, to, to do all the little details. You need to be able to recognize uh, this is a known derivative, that is a known derivative, uh, so let's just go ahead and integrate and be done with it without doing anything fancy. The only exception to this, of course, is if it's a proof problem where you need to show the details of why secant is the integral of secant tangent. Uh, but fortunately, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, uh, let's see. What else can we do here? So I didn't do trig substitution on the last one. Oh, I'm giving it away. Forget you heard anything. We, hit, we know nothing about this problem. 1 over root 4 minus 9t squared dt. And so again, let's go through the steps of what I need to be doing here to solve this. Now, I look at this problem. I don't see any simplification. Oh, goodness, please don't do this. This is a very common problem I see. You know, people will try and split up that square root to be 2 minus 3t. And while you can integrate that with substitution, that's just completely wrong. If you want to convince yourself that's wrong, just try plugging in a number. Up here, you plug it in, you get uh, the square root of... Uh, we can't plug in a 1, can we? Uh, actually, that's a good point. If you plug in a 1 up here, uh, you get a negative underneath the square root, which you can't have. You get negative 5 under the square root. Down here, you plug in a 1, you get a negative 1, which is fine. Uh, so these are definitely two different things here. So we can't uh, just split up square roots across sums or differences or anything like that. So let's get rid of that. That's just leading us in the wrong direction. So, what do I do then? All right, well, let's keep going down the list. It's not a rational function. Um, I see a polynomial and a polynomial, but that square root messes up any hope of using partial fractions, decompositions. Um, let's see. Ah, now we're at, uh, there's no substitution. That's the other thing. I, if I, you know, I could try and let u equal 4 minus 9t squared, but unfortunately, once I get that my du is negative 18t dt, there's a dt, of course, but there's no t on the top. If there's a t on the top, then this would be the correct way to uh, proceed. But there wasn't. That was a 1 in the problem I was actually asked, which means that this process down here is also no good. OK, well, what's next? Ah, finally we get to I recognize a minus, oops, use the pencil, a minus b t squared. Okay, so when I see that form, I know that I need to take, let's let 4 minus 9 t squared. And again, you always want to make sure that your 4 stays, because you can't change the constant, you can only change the variable. So you can vary the variable to make that a 4 sine squared of theta, which of course is 4 
cosine squared of theta. And again, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about details, so I, I encourage you to do the work yourself. What you should end up with uh, after this trig substitution is the integral of one-third d theta. A lot of things will cancel when you do this problem. And that will end up being eventually one-third sine inverse of three halves t plus c. And you'll see when you plug everything in how all this cancels. All right. Uh, definitely, uh, if you see this format, you want to you want to try and use regular substitution first. If there was a T on the top, regular substitution is by far the quickest way to do the problem. However, if regular substitution fails, that's where trig substitution, this process here that I mostly omitted, uh, will help you out. One more final problem for this video. For example, let's do. sine squared x cosine cubed x dx all right and then uh let's see let's go through the list i don't see any simplification it's not like sine squared plus cosine squared cancels to one immediately and i'm almost done uh in this case i have sines and cosines they don't cancel with one another um i don't see a straightforward substitution at least not yet um, and I don't recognize it as the derivative of anything, uh, but I see a bunch of trig. And when I see a bunch of trig, then, well, if it's not obvious, then I know I'm going to have to apply some trig tricks. And remember, the trig trick that we learned is when you have an odd power, that 3 is odd there. So we're going to rewrite the integral as sine squared x, cosine squared x, because we're going to pop out one of those cosines to be with the dx. And to get a cosine x dx, we need to start with u is equal to sine of x. And that will get a du is cosine of x dx. Now, of course, uh, I don't have uh, sines completely in the problem. I have a cosines in the problem as well, and that's where the other trig trick goes. So before I even plug in that substitution I just said, let's rewrite the sine squared x. That's 1 minus sine squared x cosine of x dx. And now it's super easy. I just plug in sine becomes u squared. Again here, sine squared becomes u squared. Cosine of x dx becomes du distribute u squared minus u to the fourth, one-third u cubed, one-fifth u fifth plus c, and then finally we get plugging in for u, one-third sine cubed, x minus one-fifth sine to the fifth x plus c.